imagine you're a sparrow, within a family of sparrows, within a world of sparrows. But you're a really shitty sparrow. Kind of the worst, actually. You can't fly, and your doctors have given you medication to help you fly, but nothing seems to work. Every day you fail, and everyone else keeps reminding you that flying is a critical life skill. But eventually you stop trying. Failing every day kind of sucked, so why try it all? It was nice, but you also feel guilty for giving up. And flying is an important thing that Sparrow families do. Do you not think your family is important? Don't they deserve for you to make some semblance of effort? So you go back to trying, and you try even harder. But you sometimes can't even flap your wings. It's just all bullshit. And it feels pointless. Sometimes birds make fun of you because you're an impossibly flightless sparrow. A real screw up. And this is what your life is. Until one day, as an afterthought, your doctor says, uh, by the way, you're a penguin. Holy shit. You're not a failure. You're just a penguin. You're not lazy, stupid, or weak. You don't have messed up values. You're a penguin. You have always been a penguin. There's nothing wrong. You're a beautiful penguin. The most perfect penguin. But it's a fact. Penguins can't fly. And now, when you're with your sparrow friends, while they sit in nest, you sit in a bucket of ice. Sometimes, birds give you shit about your bucket. But it doesn't hurt as much as it used to because now you know you're a penguin and you're exactly what a penguin should be. You finally give yourself permission to stop trying to fly. Not failing all the time makes you happier and you finally feel confident saying no to flying out of you. You no longer waste the energy feeling guilty about it. You love your sparrow family, but you also find an entire community of penguins to love too. Things that you thought were weird, like preferring fish to birdseed, are now commonplace in this new community. Knowing you're a penguin means knowing where you fit in a world that you never felt you fit into. It means that all the things that penguins can't do, it's not a personal failing when you can't do them, you're not supposed to be able to. You do other things instead. Autism Spectrum Disorder is defined by the Center for Disease Control as a developmental disability that can cause significant social, communication, and behavioral challenges. Symptoms include avoidance of eye contact, difficulty relating to peers, a lack of social awareness, echolalia or repeating words and phrases uncontrollably, difficulty with change, and stimming or repeated actions and behaviors. These can include foot tapping, use of fidget toys, or picking. Everyone stims, but autistic people tend to not be able to control the intensity or frequency of these movements. These difficulties affect every aspect of an autistic person's life from day to day. Several studies have found that for autistic people, guinea pigs tend to have a unique way of providing emotional support for the challenges associated with ASD. It has even been supposed that guinea pigs can perceive ASD through the use of behavioral observation. Normandy University conducted a study consisting of 44 children ages 6 to 12, with half being diagnosed with ASD and the other half being described as having typical development. The children were put in a room to have a play date with a guinea pig, and the guinea pigs themselves were monitored for positive and negative behaviors. At the beginning of the session, the guinea pigs showed more positive behaviors towards the autistic children, but by the end of the session, the guinea pigs were more relaxed overall with the neurotypical children. With the autistic children at the start of the sessions, the guinea pigs showed more approach attempts, popcorning, curiosity, resting, and grooming as positive behaviors, but also displayed avoidance and retreating behaviors. However, with the neurotypical children, there was more eating, exploration, and movement in the guinea pigs. The children's behaviors also differed. The autistic children displayed more touch attempts, object presentation, body part presentation, object manipulation, and cowering. The neurotypical children did more actual touching of the animal, carrying attempts, and sometimes actually carrying them. 
This study concluded that guinea pigs had markedly different behaviors when with autistic children than with neurotypical children, which supports their hypothesis that guinea pigs can perceive developmental delays, possibly due to the lower presentation of touch and visual cues from children with ASD. Purdue University later conducted a study on the social benefits of guinea pigs for autistic children. They studied 99 children across 15 classrooms and in four different schools. All of the children were split into groups of three containing one autistic child and two neurotypical children. Each group participated in three playdates with toys and three with guinea pigs. All playdates were 10 minutes long and two observers were always present to code and take note of behaviors. When guinea pigs were present for the playdates, there was an increase for all social approach behaviors in the autistic child. These included higher conversation with the observers in the room, more smiles, more laughing, and overall a more positive verbal valence, otherwise known as tone. There was also a decrease in problem behaviors and crying from the autistic child, and the neurotypical children made more social approaches toward the autistic child when guinea pigs were present for the playdates. These results suggested that the presence of an animal significantly increases positive social behaviors in kids with ASD. In a New York Times article covering the study's results, author Jan Hoffman writes that guinea pigs do not judge, they do not bully, they are characteristically amiable, social, and oh so tactile. In other words, it seems that guinea pigs provide a safe haven for autistic children that allows for a more comfortable expression of social behavior. The smallest study, consisting of only nine children, may actually be one of the most important cases. Led by the Comenius Institute in the Slavic Republic, nine kids ages 6 to 13 were observed in two periods. In period one, an autistic child was put in a room with a stranger and the child's acquaintances. And in period two, they were in a room with a guinea pig and their acquaintances. The amount of the autistic child's social approaches was then measured and compared. When the guinea pig was present, the number of social contacts went from 2 to 17. Generally, the autistic children had two social contacts with the stranger, compared to approximately 80 approaches with the guinea pig. These results indicate that the presence of a small therapy animal can improve both the quantity and the quality of social interactions in children with autism spectrum disorder. The most in-depth study, another led by Purdue University, measured continuous physiological arousal in both autistic and neurotypical children. This was observed through skin conductance, which is the measure of warmth on one's skin. As one becomes more anxious, the warmth increases, sometimes resulting in sweating and an arousal alert that can be noted. Emotional valence was also measured through self-reporting by the children rating their happiness on a scale of 1 to 5. The higher the value, the more positive reaction. 99 children, 33 of whom had been diagnosed with autism, were split into groups of three consisting of one autistic child and two neurotypical children. These groups then spent 10 minutes each participating in four different social scenarios. These were reading silently, reading out loud in class, free play with peers and toys, and free play with peers and guinea pigs. While the emotional valence values were very similar between the autistic and neurotypical children, the amount of arousal alerts tells a completely different story. When playing with toys and peers, the autistic children had an average of eight arousal alerts per minute in comparison to six and a half alerts per minute in the neurotypical children. However, while the neurotypical children's alerts remained the same when playing with guinea pigs and peers, the autistic children's alert dropped to four and a half per minute. This study concludes that the data supports the hypothesis that guinea pigs lower anxiety in social situations for children with ASD. Guinea pigs serve as a social conduit for autistic people. They provide the opportunity for a special interest to develop, resulting in a comfortable topic of conversation to resort to in uncomfortable social situations. Autistic people thrive on routine as do guinea pigs, and the two together can live in harmony. As it is very difficult for people to acquire service animals, it seems that guinea pigs could be a very valuable alternative in order for autistic people to cope with social challenges and decrease their anxiousness overall.